Hello everybody. Welcome to Whimsical Wednesday. My name is Tracy Bellion and I am the artist behind Tracy's Fancy. Um, I'm a furniture painter, artist, motivator, inspirational cheerleader. <laughs> And I'm here on the Dixie Bell paint page. I'm a Dixie Bell brand ambassador and I meet every single Wednesday night right here uh, to either continue on something that we've already been working on or start something to new. And tonight we are starting something new. Hello, Colleen. Hi, Terry. How are you? Welcome, you guys. Please say hello when you come on. Um, let us know that you're here. Dixie Bell would love to know where you're tuning in from. And it also helps uh, if you say where you're from, that way we have some of, hi Juana, we have some of our retailers across the country that will also watch these live videos and that way they can kind of hook up with you or you can hook up with them so that you can get some paint in person. Um, hello Deborah. hi Kathy, so glad to see everybody on here tonight. It's Wednesday, we're halfway through the week, things are starting to feel a little bit a little bit more normal just a little bit i know nina isn't it fabulous nina is the new owner of one of my uh one of my painted pieces one of the headboards that i she doesn't have it yet it's still, still here in my in my garage with me because of the you know coronavirus so she didn't get to make her trek here yet but she's coming all the way from florida to pick up a couple of nightstands and a headboard and i'm so thankful for her and um, love that I got to meet her in person too. Um, we've got some people in from, let's see, Deborah from Fort Myers Beach. Hi, honey. How are you doing? Elizabeth and Katie and Susan. So, so glad to see you guys. Lynn, you as well. So, um, let's see. Kathy's doing a little dance. Are you doing a little dance? Hey, Sue. Hi there. Hi, Estelle from Michigan. Oh, Sully's on. Hi, honey. Sully is on right now. Sully is the um, a friend of mine, for one thing, and she also works closely with Dixie Belle, and we carry her products on the Dixie Belle website. As a matter of fact, at the top of this video, I put my link up there. That's my affiliate link. You can go to that link to order your paints. Um, any paint, any product, especially anything that you see me using here tonight, and it can be shipped right to your door, but as you can also order uh, the molds, and I'm actually going to show you how to use the molds, and why would I add more molds to this bed, right? But there's a reason for it, and I was so excited that I had something that would help me with a problem that I have with this bed here behind me. So um, anyway, Sully is the creator of Would You Bend, and thank you for watching tonight, hun. So anyway, you can order Would You Bend molds there as well. You can order your brushes and any of the supplies that we're about to use. So this bed behind me is a king size bed. You can see it here. It is, I've got the headboard. I posted it earlier today. Every Wednesday, say I always post whatever we're going to be working on that day on Tracy's Fancy Facebook page. So, um, looky there, Yvonne's asking for anyone that's got the bird, the bird mold. So that's awesome. Um, <laughs> you'd rather look Sully Joe and see what we're working on here other than what you can eat. Sully's in my health and wellness group as well. I have a health and wellness group that just helps people kind of clean out from the inside and, and feel better about themselves and be the best that they can be so we can all keep creating beautiful pieces. So this is, I believe it's called a Rococo bed. I don't know if I'm saying that word correctly. Sully's probably cracking up, but is that how this word, how this bed is pronounced? This is a king size headboard. Um, there is a headboard and a footboard and two bed rails. This is not my first one to do. I've done, in the 12 years I've probably painted, these are reproductions. So I, I'm maybe about 10 that look like this, maybe about 10 of them. And they're usually a solid color. This one is gonna be a solid color. So for those of you that were thinking we get to get all fancy like we did with that media cabinet that I posted yesterday with the checks on the end and the blending on the front. Um, this one's not gonna be crazy. It's gonna be nice and subtle and muted, but I mean, hello, it's fancy all by itself, right? Um, I, d I do have to tell you though, I painted one of these beds, this exact kind of bed, but it was a queen size um, for a family in the film industry um, in California. <laughs> As they were in LA and it was for their little boy. He had hair down to about right here. Um, he was about three or four and they wanted it painted like a lion. I'm not kidding y'all. And I can't get over my old fashioned staging that I used to do. Like this bed got taken a picture of it in my driveway. 
But if y'all twist my arm, I might share this bed. It was crazy, but it, what they were very specific. They were very creative, this family was, and they were very, very specific in exactly how they wanted it painted. So they wanted the headboard to look like a lion. I'm not kidding. The, the, the feet on the bed had like lion claws and they wanted me to paint the fingernails red. So the nails got painted red. The, they wanted it to look like it was in the um, safari. And so uh, I did like hair <laughs> and eyes. Like these, were, these roses right here were eyes. And I think this was like the lion's mouth. And then this was like the lion's hair. It was crazy. <laughs> it's so crazy. And then the sideboards had safari, like cheetah and zebra. And it was very childlike. So it's not like it's some artistic masterpiece. It was pretty crazy. Um, Lisa, it's not. So let me tell you. So this bed, that's the last one that I did like that. Was that crazy bed for the family in California. And it was a lot of fun. And I'm thankful for that time. So anyway, this bed belongs to a client here in San Antonio. They live in San Antonio. They dropped it off at my house last night, or was it night before? Either last night or night before, um, just so I could start it on Whimsical Wednesday. I said, I gotta do it live on Wednesday night with my people. So here we are on Dixie Bell's page, um, ready to paint this bed. But they got it here to me. The footboard and the side rails look good. It is their bed, but I'm gonna bring you up close because I want you to see um, that a lot of times pieces like this, they've got some damage. So you can see right here, this bed is split. I think it's probably been dropped before. So do you see this, this split right here? It goes all the way up through the flower. It's even cracked a little bit up in here, but it's very hard. Like the bed's still nice and sturdy, but it's got some cosmetic flaws. This piece right here, listen to it. I'm gonna see if y'all can hear this. It's hollow, it's got, it's very, very hollow. Then this up here is harder. So this is like solid, but I don't even think that, I think this is some sort of like wood composite up here. Gray side looks bigger, optical illusion. Oh really, Yvonne, really? Okay, well actually this is Boss Primer on this side and, and we're gonna talk about that in a second. So this board back here is very thin, it's very flimsy and it's, I think that it's probably cracked. Um, hello, Grapevine Decor. Hi there, and hi, Lola. So let me move you over here and show you where my issue is, okay? This is the issue that I'm having. I'm gonna roll this down a little bit so that you can see um, what we've got going on here. So can you see this right here? There was, this had splintered. Now my husband glued it back down and flattened it out. This was completely up and frayed. He kind of cleaned it off, glued it down. Now right here, we're missing an entire mold. So you can see that all of these are raised molds, right? These look like I've put would you been molds all over it, but I haven't. This right here is completely missing. Now, honestly, if I had gone and found this bed myself and it was for a client, I would say, hey, it's a beautiful bed, it's sturdy, but it's got some things missing. Um, I can't replace that. That was before Would You Ben came along or you know any type of molds. I can't replace that. I'll just paint right over it. No one's gonna even notice that it's gone, right? But now I have Would You Ben. So look what I have, guys. I, when the guy brought it in, when the husband brought it in, I said, he goes, that's missing. Can you do anything about that? I was like, as a matter of fact, I can. Look what I have. I have two of these. I have two of them. So see, they're, they go opposite directions, right? So this is normally something I would put on the front of an armoire door or you know, on the sides of drawers or something like that. So these are my woodsy bin pieces. Now remember, they're hard and brittle, You know that they, they soften up when you heat them. So is it the exact same size as um, this part right here? No, it isn't, but it has the same shape. So let me roll you down to this other side. So this is the other side. So here it is, this piece right here. Now it's got some fancy leaves on it. I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna spend that much time fixing it because they, the parent, the adult, the adults, the parents, ooh, what on earth am I talking about? The people who own the bed didn't really care that the mold was missing, okay? So here we go. I've got this right here. Can you see where this little S curve starts right here is just like this one? Do you see that? So that S curve. Now I can heat this up and make it sway like that piece, but it comes out and goes back in. So what I thought I would do is I take the adjoining piece and make it come back in. So 
we are going to do a very, very fast repair. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this. And I just so happen to have these pieces here, which is crazy because I don't have that much wood you bend um, in place. Um, Sue, Sue, you use these, right? At, at, the, uh, at the workshop, right? Awesome. Okay, so what I'm going to do is first I'm going to heat this piece. Got it right here. Got my heat gun right here, my handy little heat gun. So I'm going to bring y'all over to the table and let y'all watch me work. Actually, let me, um, let me raise this up a little bit. We're going to repair this real fast. And then we're going to talk about priming, why I primed this bed. Okay. We're going to talk about that. And then I'm going to let you guys help me decide between, um, I think I'm going to decide between drop cloth and fluff on this bed. So it's already moving. I can already see it moving. It's already softening up. It does, it happens really, really quickly. So I'm going to soften this up and we're going to put it over on the bed. I've got my tight bond glue right here, ready to go. Cause we're going to glue it in place. And the beauty of this is yes, they're already pre-made, but they have over 3000 molds available. So if you can find a mold that works for you, you put your tight bond glue on it. It's a quick setup and you're ready to go. You just keep on rolling. Your project just keeps on going. So let's see, I, I heated up the wrong one. I'm gonna heat this one up. I heated up the wrong one. Uh, and then you just keep going. You can just glue them on and then you're ready to paint. So we're literally gonna glue this in place, talk for a minute, and then we're gonna start priming. You don't have to wait. You don't have to clamp it. You don't have to let it dry overnight. Just put it on and move on. It's, a, it, uh, it's pretty amazing. For someone who's used molds for years, I don't know if anyone was as happy when this product came out. Okay, so it's now bendable. It's bendable and pliable. So if I were to put this right here, I want, I just bend it how I want it. So there we go. I'm gonna heat it up a little bit more. I didn't get this in hot enough because I wanna make it make an S curve. I'm gonna make it, uh, it's kind of like the shape of it kind of the shape of a seahorse actually. So you see that I'm just bending it how I want it. Y'all saw how straight it was, right? I'm going to follow the pattern that was already there. And then I'm going to change the end here in just a minute. And uh, now I wouldn't have to, I could just do it like this and I'm going to glue that on. Now, is it going to be the exact, actually, I think I'm just going to do that. I think I'm just going to cut it and do it. So I'm going to hold this in place for just a second. I'll look here at the phone. Um, Rima, you love this piece that I'm using? So now it's nice and uh, curvy, whereas before it was long and straight. So now all I have to do is let it, you can't see, you can't see it. I'm gluing it in place right here. You can't see anything but my hair. I got in your way, right? Okay, so that's that. That's, this is where I've, I'm holding it in place while it cools off. This is what it looked like before. Sorry that my hair got in your way, Nancy. <laughs> Hello, Ruth. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. There we go. Look at my new shape. So this was my original, and this is my new. Big difference. Big difference. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take y'all back to the table, right here to the table. I'm going to apply my, um, let's see, let me see where I wanted to cut this. Y'all just watch me, bear with me here for a second while I decide where I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna go like this, and I think I'm gonna cut it about right here. So I go ahead, I'm just gonna heat it up enough that I can cut it. You can cut it with scissors, a knife. I'm, I've used plastic cutlery on this, honestly. So I'm gonna cut it about right there. It's not gonna be perfect. But I'm going to cut that just like that and take it back over here. I'm going to curl this end just a little bit more like that. It's still, it's still warm enough that I can curl it. I'm going to hold that in place just like this for just a minute. Hi, Tracy Lopez. Hi there. Hi, Yvonne. And there we go. That's it. I'm going to turn it over. Oh, I kind of... I Broke that one a little bit. Shoot. Okay. Well, okay. Look what I did. This is real life. So y'all want to see here what I did? So I broke it a little bit. 
I didn't get it hot enough, but that's okay because watch what you can do. You just heat it up and you can just mash it back together. <laughs> just heat it up and you can just mash it back and we're going to glue it there, I think. Maybe I'll just get rid of that part. I'll fix that part in a second. That's just because I, if my table was flat, it'd be better. That's all right. We're going to just fix that in a second. I'm going to put this glue on this. And there we go. Glue it in place. Just like that. Curl that a little bit. Now, what you do need to do is once you've got this in place, just like this, see that? Now, I'm, I'm serious, guys. Before, I would not have done this. I would have just painted, you know, I would have just painted right over it. I wouldn't have messed with this piece. I would have assumed they would have had pretty throw pillows up and no one would have seen it um, because I wasn't going to go to the trouble to try to make a mold. So once you have it in place enough, you need to take your heat gun and you need to heat it just a little bit. Warm it up and give it one last good push onto the piece. So I think what I'll do is I'll probably, we're going to go ahead and move on to the priming, but um, we're going to let this sit for a minute and then I'm going to show you how you can just start priming right over it. What I do want to do is take this piece and this little piece down here that is not curled, I think I want to match it up like that. Probably cut it about right there. Let's just go ahead and do that. Y'all don't care, right? So back here to the table, I mean, I need this end right here, this end. I'm going to heat that up. I'm going to cut it, and I'm going to glue that right there on the end of that. Just soften it up a little bit. Hi from around the corner, says Steve. Hello, Patty. I don't normally do work like this where y'all are actually watching me work on a table. All right. I'm just guesstimating here. Um, I think that'll be about enough. <laughs> just guessing. That's probably too much, even. Roll y'all back to the bed so you can see. Yep, that is too much. I'm going to saw that off a little bit. It does get really hot. And I think that I can just put that on like that. I think that'll be good enough. That'll be good enough for me. I'm going to add a little glue. <laughs> if Sully's watching, she's probably like, oh my gosh, Tracy, that is not a good matchup. But I really, I don't, it's so much better than not having it at all, you know? <laughs> Why not take the end of the piece you cut off and adhere it to the end? Because that S went the wrong way. So the original piece, the original piece, the end, this S curled outward. Do you see that? It curled outward. I needed, if I really wanted to match this whole piece, I needed it to curl inward, which would be the inside, which has no, no, uh, oh, thanks, Sally. This has no decoration on it. See how this has carving? If I had it curled the way I needed it to curl, it would have nothing. So I just cut the other end off and that's okay. And I think that that looks great. So there we go. So do you see that? How quick and easy that was? So now I can go ahead and uh, start my project. I can go ahead and start priming and that's what we're gonna do. Yes, Rima, she is. Uh, let's see here, thank goodness it's Wednesday. Aw, yay, Polly Ann, thank you. Thank you, thank you, hon. Okay, so let's talk about Let's talk about the piece. This, guys, is two coats of primer on this side. Um, why did I prime this piece? It, it's based on what my client wants or what I'm working on. So these are the things. I know that I think Brandy came up with a flow chart um, for people that, you know, ask the question, do I prime or do I not prime? Or I thought paint, you know, chalk type paint was supposed to be easy and you weren't supposed to have to prime and you weren't supposed to do any prep. Well, you don't have to sand unless you're working on a really shiny surface.
With that, you can use slick stick. Um, I still recommend scuffing up a little bit. But when you are painting something like this, um, do you need to always prime it? No, I mean, you can see that this is really raw, right? If I were gonna paint it any other color besides a pale yellow or a pale pink or a white or a pale tan, any, any pale color, any light color, had I gone with purple or blue or red or flamingo or peony, because that's how I say that word, or charcoal or black or anything like that, I could just paint right over the top of this bed. You get to eliminate the prep step at all other than cleaning it well first because you wanna make sure that your chalk type paint is not going to uh, not adhere to it well. Oh, sorry you guys. I didn't show any like, like glitches on this end. Sorry that it's buffering. Um, if it's acting weird, always go out and come back but it still looks good to me. I'm sorry. Um, so anyway, we're worried about bleed through here. This wood is going to bleed. You're gonna have some yellow, maybe not a red bleed through, but you're gonna have like some yellow bleed through probably come through, and I know it, because I primed in Boss White, not Boss Clear, but I used Boss White because my client wants to go, she wants to go a very, very neutral color. So she wants to go, uh, she said not white white, but um, like uh, an off white. And y'all are going to help me decide that in a minute. So because of that, I had to prime it, and I primed it in white. If you um, if you prime it in white, it takes away a coat of paint for you. So I could have primed it in clear too, but why not go ahead and put a layer of white down when I'm going with white paint anyway, right? So that is why I primed. Now when I prime this piece, you may not be able to see it, but especially when you've got a lot of carvings, a lot of depth in areas, um, places where it kind of pulls and petals, those areas will turn really yellow. Even when I primed, they did. So this has two coats, two coats of, of Boss White primer on it already. Okay, so let's do a little bit of priming on this side see what it is that I'm talking about and let's talk about how to get in here now a lot of people think that uh, brush painting this type of stuff is too hard and it really isn't um, hold on just a second guys I don't know why my uh, hold on I thought I had my do not disturb on there we go um a lot of people think that it's too difficult to do and it really is not so uh, if you have a sprayer and you're used to using a sprayer and you like spraying and you're used to spa spraying Dixie Belle paint, which needs to be thinned down a little bit to be used in a sprayer, sprayers are great. I have a sprayer. I just don't enjoy spraying that much. So I like to, Nancy, you were thinking sawmill gravy. Um, she wants a glaze on it as well. So I'm afraid if I use sawmill, sawmill gravy that it's going to take it too dark. So I'm thinking either we're going to try tonight either drop cloth or fluff. Um, but I'm thinking I'm going to go fluff because then I think she's going to put a, we're going to put a, a brown wax over it. So um, this is my this is my primer. This is Boss White, and I just use a smaller brush like this. This is my flat small, flat small. And to show you the difference, uh, this is flat medium. That's the difference between these two. And this one, oh, well, this one's flat medium as well. Okay, so flat, small, flat, medium. This gets in those holes a lot better. This one does. So I'm gonna use the flat, small, and just use plenty of paint when you're working on these areas like this. I just put it on there and I just stick my brush in there and just work it all around, just like that. Now, when I'm completely done painting, at the very end, when I'm through painting, I will take like a small artist brush with my paint, not my primer, but with my paint. After I've primed the most of the whole bed like this and I've painted, um, probably two coats of my white because we're having to go with white, one of the whites. I'll take a small artist brush and I'll get back from every single angle and get up in these carvings. And it does take a while, um, but not that long. I painted this side of the bed today in about, about 20 minutes probably uh, for one coat. And then I came back and painted the other coat. So I've got about an hour in that over there. Just because you do, you have to spend some time with all these carvings. And you really have to go back and babysit them. You don't want to have any drips. You want to keep going back and looking and making sure that you've mopped up any drips because you're going to get drips in these areas. 
and so that's that. I do a lot of pouncing. I know that we did this on the bed that Nina bought. We did a lot of pouncing on that as well. You can kind of pounce on these holes. Another thing you can do is, because we're on live video, I have this standing up, but if you have a lot of carvings, you can lay it down flat on a flat surface and paint on it, and the paint that runs into these holes kind of washes the sides for you. So that works really well. That works really well too. So it's, you know, it's not a pretty thing to do. You're, you feel like you're just tearing up your brush, but you know what's great about these Dixie Bell synthetic brushes? They bounce right back. I, I uh, am not nice to mine. Other than I do give them a really good bath. I clean them really, really well when I'm done. So they last. They last me forever. I don't order very many brushes, honestly. I don't. I'm, I make that initial investment. So I just take it like a section at a time and then kind of go back and run my brush like this, kind of smooth it out, visit all the little cracks and crevices, just kind of hit them so I'm taking away any of those puddles. So you can see the difference here between coat one and coat two. It's a pretty, pretty big difference. All right. So that is why we prime. That's why I chose white primer versus clear primer. Um, and had my client wanted a darker color, I would have not primed at all. So if you are a business owner or you're painting for a living, um, will you have to turn it around and paint the back? No, that, and that's not a dumb question, or, and it's not a dumb thing to do, but no, I don't paint the back. My time is worth too much, and no one's gonna see the back of this headboard. And um, same thing with Amors, like super tall Amors, I don't paint the top of them unless, and I ask, where will this be? Or do you want me to paint the top? If it's gonna be in an upstairs, uh, downstairs, and there's an upstairs with an overlook, then people can see the top of the armoire. Um, uh, Sally says, we love Dick's Bell brushes here in Leeds. They are really, they do, they do. They go, so, you put them in the washing machine? Oh my gosh. Like in the dishwasher or in the washing machine? You are cracking me up, Sully. Okay, that is something I've never heard. That is absolutely hilarious. Um, I use my scrubby, the scrubby soaps. I love my scrubby soaps. That's what I use to wash mine off. And honestly, Matt asked me to order more today. Um, he, he likes them as well. He uses them for, to clean everything. But yeah, they do take a beating, Sully. You are not kidding. They take a beating and they just bounce right back. All right. So that's that. It's going to be beautiful. So let's talk color now. Let me put this aside and let's talk color. Oh, well, let me show you. Let me show you over here. Okay. So here we are. This is my, this is my mold that's gone on. It's completely dry. It is not going anywhere. I can go ahead and take my, take my brush and I can go ahead and prime this section over here. I can go ahead and paint right over it. I am ready to roll. Prime it, paint it. If I had paint, I'd, I'd be ready to paint right over. I could glaze over it right now. See, we got these boo-boos over here, but my client's totally okay with that, so. All right, so y'all see that? It's ready to go. That's what, that's the beauty. So when you, when you use molds that you make, that you make with, uh, unless it's hot glue, which I do like that, but if you're using molds like with any type of uh, molding product, even the resin pours, I mean, you gotta wait on those and the, the clay molds, you gotta wait on those. Now, do you pay a little bit more for these? Yeah, you do, for the convenience of it, you know, um, but that's worth it to me. Okay, so let's do, let's put a, bit, a little bit of color on here. Let's put some drop cloth on. Oh, scrubby soap, Beth. They're freaking amazing. Let me see if I have one over here. Hold on and I'll show you. Where are, okay, I'll be right back. Okay, scrubby soaps, I don't know. I think they're they're like two something, I think, in, on Dixie Bell's website. Um, they come like this, a little package like this. There's lemon, lime, orange, and lemon. There's green, orange, and yellow. And uh, it is, comes like, this one's mine. <laughs> it had water in it. I leave it by the sink, just like this, in the little case. So one side is a scrubby sponge, and the other side is the soap. And I don't, I don't know what this is made out of, but it takes everything off. Like grease, it says grease, paint, oil, dirt, and more. It takes everything off 
of your soaps. It says home and garden, garage, workshop. Um, but as the soap goes down, the scrubby stuff starts coming through. At first, you can only see soap on one side. And then these little scrubbers are great. The, the soap will go completely out, and then you just keep the scrubbers, and they work really well. So that's the scrubby soaps. But they take all the paint off your brushes. You won't have any paint left on your brush at all. Oh, they're six? Okay, Deb, sorry. <laughs> they're six. Thank you. But they last forever. Like one of those last, well, not forever, but I paint a lot. Um, I probably use, I probably use two a month. But if, you're not, if you don't paint at this level, they, they'll last longer than that. All natural limes and lemons made in Florida. Terry, thank you. Thanks for letting us know that. Yeah, they smell good. They feel good. They feel like when I use like a coconut oil or something, they leave like a really soft feel on your hands. They don't dry your hands out at all. They actually moisturize your hands. We use them on our hands here. We have them in our kitchen sink and at our workshop sink. They are, Deb. They really are. Okay, so that's that. So let's put some color on. Um, like, let me show you. These are, this one's not so much. So these are my brushes. Here's one that's, n neither one of these are new. I've had these forever, forever. And this one's been used over and over and over. You can see on the handle. It's been around forever. But do you see this? Like, it's so, and this is because I take good care of them when I clean them. Um, and this one is still wet. This one's wet because I used it earlier today. Um, same thing with it. It's got a little bit more on it. If Matt uses it, he doesn't quite get all the paint off. Okay, so let's put some drop cloth on, you guys. Let's go over here to this side. What time is it? Oh, y'all help me decide this. Um, I think we're going to use brown, besting wax and brown um, on top because she does want that glazed look. Not a glazed look, but she wants like that uh, antiqued look. Aged. Aged is the word, like old world age look. So, um, Let's just put some color on, see what y'all think. So this here is drop cloth. Plus this will let y'all see them side by side. Oh, that looks so pretty. So I'm at, I don't know if I'm gonna wax. I don't know if I will wax or if I'll Dixie dirt. I'm not sure, you know, I could use the Dixie dirt around all the moldings. I could maybe just wax around the edges. I don't want to wax over the whole thing. Just I want to wax around the carvings and inside the carvings. So there is a single coat of, which I probably could get away now that I've done boss white. I could probably get away with doing um, one coat. Do I hang them to dry? I do. Right over there on my workshop wall. <laughs> right over there on pegs. I sure do. Who's saying you're killing me, mom? Who is that? Ruth, <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> Y'all are cracking me up. Okay, so that is that. Now let me get the, now let me get fluff for you, okay? All right, this is fluff. Let's put some fluff down here on the bottom. I guess I could, Maybe I should use both. <laughs> maybe I should use both. Maybe I should use fluff and drop cloth and just kind of do, or maybe I should use fluff and age with drop cloth. You know what I mean? And then do a little artistic flair to it. How's that? I don't know. I kind of like that. What do y'all think about that? Yeah? I think we just, I think we just decided. <laughs> Use both Dixie Dirt and wax, maybe drop cloth. Um, oh, gotcha, gotcha, Ruth. That is funny. That is so funny. I love that. You're like, okay, mom, I gotcha. You. You're killing me. I love that. Hello, Miss Jean, all the way from South Africa. Both Nancy, you like that? I'm gonna have to go back and read y'all's comments. Yeah, I like. I like that little bit of a blend there. Can y'all see it good with the color? I hate to move y'all in any closer because I move y'all and weird things happen. That looks pretty good, huh? So I'm not sure, maybe I'll blend. Like maybe I can do like a little bit of a blend here and do fluff in the middle and then put some drop cloth around the sides. Maybe we'll do that. Okay, speaking of, speaking of Mother's Day and what I'm gonna plug myself here, uh, I have my painted denim course is this Saturday night, y'all. This Saturday night on uh, my page, Tracy's Fancy, 
Um, people are already signing up and uh, maybe if you want to do it and paint something for your mom or do it with your mom online it's an online class you don't have to be present to take the class but we would sure love to have you party with us on saturday night it's an hour and a half long um and sign up is on my you can go on my facebook page or you can go to my website at tracysfancy.com and sign up there that looks pretty good huh i have to play with it a little bit but that's both of them. Do you think that that's making it too yellow? I don't know. I'm, I'm wondering if next to the fluff, drop cloth becomes yellow. It looks a little yellow to me. Oh, Rima, you're so sweet. Pat, yes, please do. So you don't have to paint when you're there. We're using all Dixie Belle products. Um, I only say that on this class. Usually I say, well, use whatever paint you want, but I've never painted on clothes with any other product but Dixie Belle, and it's legit. It will not go away. If you use another product, I can't guarantee that. That's, that's my only drawback. Um, but most people don't even paint while I'm painting. They just paint, Green, you're so sweet. They just, they just hang out and watch and then uh, paint later. But you'll have access to the class forever. It'll be yours forever. It comes with a supply list, blah, blah, blah. So um, we're going to be painting, probably doing florals, probably doing some flowers. Flat flowers. We're going to do some flowers for Mother's Day. How does that sound? You want to join me? <laughs> Lisa, I was kind of thinking that. You think once we get dirt on it, it won't? I may have to go ahead and prime that side and then do solid on top of one color, solid on the bottom of the other color, and continue with both colors on this side and see. What you think? How do you paint the denim when you can't paint? How do you paint the denim when you can't paint? Do you mean, yeah, I don't know if, no, I, I think that it might look a little bit yellow. I'm feeling like it might too. Oh, Pollyann, I'm sorry. Yeah, it, it does kind of look like buttercream, Debbie. I'm sorry, Pollyann. I, I, it is for a lot of people. So we'd love to have you join us on Saturday night. Pam, I, Pamela, Pamela, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, stencils. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Well, I don't know why you're saying that because you can paint. Okay, so I'm going to teach you how to do a floral. Okay, so you're going to learn it, how to do at least one floral and anyone can do it but I'm going to show you some other drawing designs that you can do that are very simple and you will watch me do it and you can save it and re-watch it and re-watch it and you gotta you just gotta start somewhere you gotta practice it's not hard and this painting style is super super organic it's not like a you gotta color in the lines kind of style you're working with a lot of water it's like a watercolor so what kind of wherever the design flow goes you just go with it and anyone who took my apron class will tell you that is how it happens. So um, a little less drop cloth around the edges. So maybe more, um, let's put some more fluff on. We'll just play. And then, and then I'm gonna have to go because we have someone else I think coming on live after this. So we'll put some more fluff in it here. Oh, you know what I probably need is some water. Not water to drink, you know, but I gotta, gotta have my little Mr. Bottle. I did not plan to do this. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Rima. Thank you. Does buttercream look yellow too? Buttercream has a yellow tint. Absolutely. Buttercream comes from, you know, buttercream. Looks like buttercream. I did not know that we were going to be doing this, but we'll go for it here. Yeah, I think it just might need a little bit more white, but I think y'all are right. I think we could age it like this and not have to have um, that much wax. I think we could just age it like this and then it's pretty cool. But I don't know. We'll see. I'll see when the when it's daylight, you know? Yeah, Mr. Bottles are a must. I want to do a mermaid on my overall. So, Sue, that's one of the other drawings I'm going to do. So, it's a bonus. So, you don't just come learn. You know, that's one of the things with my classes sometimes I'll be, sometimes, you know, you'll see things like, we're going to learn this at this class. Usually I always throw extra stuff in there. So, okay, this is what we're doing, but if you want to do this, you can do this. And if you want to do this, you can do this. And we'll just, we'll just wing it. So, okay, I'll commit to doing a floral and a mermaid. How's that sound? 
You like it like that, Sully? You like it? I think I need to get more on it. Maybe it's because it's by all this boss, which is like such a hard white. Maybe that's what's making it look yellow, not the fluff. We'll see. We shall see. Okay, so one last thing, one last thing. Boss primer. When you're concerned that you're going to have bleed through and you're painting with a light color paint, that was our second focus tonight. Our first focus tonight was molds are always an option and they are worth every penny. They make your life easy, they make your project fast, and they make your project amazing if you don't have, if you've got an ugly piece of furniture with no character on it at all. But if you have a piece that's loaded with molds, why would you use one? Because you needed to fix it. And we fixed it right over there and no one will ever 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 know that that was not already on there amazing right prime your piece pick a color there we go <laughs> pamela flying i did i painted flying pigs for pamela on her she has overalls of flying pigs y'all i've painted tennis rackets i've painted flying pigs I've painted butterflies. I've painted every flower you can imagine. I've painted pineapples. I've painted mermaids, um, antlers, feathers. <laughs> I don't know, lots of stuff, lots of stuff. Oh, please do marry Tracy's Fancy, T-R-A-C-E-Y-S-F-A-N-C-Y. -E it's up at the top of this video when, when we're done. Go back up to this video at the top and it says Tracy's Fancy up there. You can just click my name and then go over. Thank you, Rima. You can go over and follow. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. I like it. I think it was good. Good thing. Good stuff. Okay, guys. Well, y'all have a wonderful night. I'm going to hop over to my Facebook page, Tracy's Fancy, and paint with everybody over there for about 20 minutes. Kind of keep moving on what we're doing here. Maybe make a decision here. Um, and so that's it. Thank you, Dixie Bell, so much for having me. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful products. One-stop shop. Anyone that has Dixie Bell retailer in their area, please check them out. Some of the stores are already open back up. Um, if you want to order online, just use my link. Click on it, order, and they will ship it to your door as well, okay? Mimi, I'm so happy. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Um, someone's saying they agree, sawmill gravy. Y'all want me to try sawmill gravy? All right, I'll put some sawmill gravy on, on my page when I go over. We'll look at that as well. How's that sound? Thank you, Miss Dixie Bell, whoever you are. I didn't even see who it was. I never even saw you commenting. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, we'll see you guys uh, next Wednesday night. Okay, take care. We'll see y'all later. Y'all have a good weekend. Bye-bye.